We've been a little busy with our guests. We just had a great chat with Brett Musburger, and Jeff Garland was here in hour number one. And now I turn to my right, and I find the host of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, who is out here getting set to call Ravens and Chargers for everybody's listening pleasure on Westwood One tomorrow. Good to see you, Ross Tucker. Yeah, absolutely, Rich. Thanks for having me. And this has been, like, awesome for me since I got here. I'm a huge Goldbergs fan. Okay. Jeff Garland. That's great. And Brent Musburger. I mean, are you kidding me? You're look. I mean, when when he said to me that I was getting him fired up over the NFL, like the the, <laughs> the kid in me who used to watch the NFL today was just like, that is the greatest thing of all time. I distinctly remember growing up wanting to get home from church as soon as possible yes. so that I could watch the pregame show and hear him say, you are looking live. They really had it with him and Jimmy the Greek. I mean, they, Irv Cross, Irv Cross yeah. they had it, they had it going back then, man. Oh, sure. And, uh, and, and Phyllis George, um, as well. She was, and Jane Kennedy after Phyllis. I mean, and you, you know, the, you are looking live where that, what that's about, right? For gambling, gambling. Yeah. Right. So that, you know, the weather, you would know what the weather is. That's why he would say that all the time. You are looking and I live. And I never knew that. I did remember Jimmy the Greek being like, he wouldn't say the spread. He'd be like, I think they'll beat him, not by a lot, but by a little, maybe a, maybe a well, few points. I met him. Pete Axtelm <laughs> used to do it for ESPN as well, and now it's kind of making a comeback right now. I mean, it's pretty amazing. All right, you're calling Ravens Chargers. This is just a monster huge game, and I don't know which way to call it right now because the Ravens have been absolutely a totally different team that is tough, that can hit you in the mouth, that keeps their defense fresh because they're constantly hitting their opposing defense in the mouth. Um, Lamar Jackson almost won in, in Arrowhead, so why shouldn't he be able to walk into StubHub just like Case Keenum did a couple weeks ago and win this game? But then Phillip Rivers has been dynamite the last month. What do you make of this game? And, and I was just thinking of this driving out here, Phil, uh, Rich. Have you ever thought of a better dichotomy between two quarterbacks? Young, I mean, they're old, like polar stylish. opposite. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, they, they couldn't be more different. It's crazy. I, I love watching the Ravens. I mean, as a guy that played offensive line, watching them on tape now, Rich, it's almost like watching an academy, like Army or Navy. Like every time they get to third down, it's third and like one to three or four. And either Lamar Jackson or Gus Edwards will fall forward and they'll get the first down by like a yard. Right. It's it's totally different style of football than we've seen. He had 18 carries again last week against the Bucs. I don't know that it's sustainable over a career. I definitely don't think that. It might be sustainable over a season. But for right now, they're winning with it. It's been successful. It complements their really good defense really well. And I think it gives them a great chance to win tomorrow night. Well, this is their best defense that he's facing uh, by far. I mean, the other defenses that he that he played against, Cincinnati, Oakland, Atlanta, Kansas City, Tampa, that, right. they're not walking through that door in StubHub on Saturday. But, I mean, he, he, he has been throwing the ball increasingly and th increasingly better as well. And Greg Roman, the guy who had this offense for Kaepernick, Kaepernick yeah. is the guy who's dialing it up on behalf of John Harbaugh right. right now. It is truly something that I think the Ravens, there's, there's a there there. I really believe the Ravens have, I, I, I kind of believe they're going to win this football game. That's I, that's as close to the unlockiest lock as I can possibly <laughs> get right there. Well, I've been, tell, I, I've been saying, um, I don't know if I'm going to pick them to win the game, but with the point spread, since we were talking about that, I love the Ravens with the point spread because I do think they could win the game. I just love their mentality. And the shame of it to me, Rich, is, there's going to be a team in the AFC, whether it's the Colts or the Ravens, maybe the Steelers. Somebody's not going to get in. I, think I it's actually a, think could go on a run. I think it's the Steelers, bud. You think they're going to lose? Well, I to, think they lose to New Orleans. Right. Um, and I think the Ravens or the Titans are going to win out. And um, Wow. And I, that would put the Steelers at home. Can you imagine the Steelers finally beat Brady and the Patriots? And they lose. And still don't make the playoffs. That would be amazing. It's a shame, though, because I'd say four or five weeks ago, I thought maybe there's four teams in the whole NFL that could actually win the Super Bowl, right? Like Rams, Saints, Chiefs, Patriots. Now, I, it's think, like they're, 10. I think they're both wide open, man. I, I can see a lot of teams winning it all. Look, the Chiefs, we all know, right? There's New England that... We all know. And right. It's amazing, you know, Chris, is, and what we just discussed with with Brent, you know, 
when he talked about what the flavor of the month is in the desert right, right now, he talked about the Chargers and how it's been the Saints all season and it was the Chiefs for quite some time and the Rams for quite some time. New England is totally overlooked right now because Gronk is a shadow of his former self. Yeah, it's a shame. And that and that uh, Josh Gordon is now no longer right. there. They just did, in fact, lose to Pittsburgh, which is kind of odd. They yeah. lost to Tennessee, Jacksonville, and the Lions. But this is still the Patriots, and I think Houston loses in Philadelphia I on agree with Sunday, that. and I New England's not losing at home. I think New England has has a, a, a home date in the second week of the playoffs waiting for him right now. Right, and then they presumably go in the conference championship game. Let's say they win that home game. They've been tough to beat all year at home. Mm -hmm. Then they go to Kansas City or maybe to L.A. to play the Chargers. I don't. Not, it's not like either one of those are insurmountable in a one-game situation that you can't imagine the Patriots actually getting it done. They can get it done in that one-game situation. I don't see it happening. You don't. No. So who do you think? I mean, now, I've, I've given you a whole bunch of things, Ross Tucker, and it's time for you to, to you know throw what? one down on the table. What yeah, do you, think you know here? what? I, I'm still going to go with the Chiefs. I'm still going to go with the Chiefs. I, You know, even when they've lost the Patriots game, the Chargers game, the Rams game, they are right there. We've never seen anybody like Mahomes. I just can't believe some of the things he does. And what's interesting, and you know this, Rich, because you're all over the draft, there was a wide range of opinions on him mm -hmm. when he came out. I mean, some people watched him and just couldn't understand how unorthodox it was. He didn't get anything within the structure of the offense at Texas Tech. I'll still take the Chiefs. I don't feel good about it. I mean, I, I don't. I feel good about the Saints and the NFC. I don't picture a team with the way the Saints are playing. I don't picture anybody going to the Superdome and beating them. I feel really good about the Saints. AFC, I'll still go Chiefs because I think they win Sunday night. I think they have home field advantage. And I still think Mahomes can find a way to get it done. Why do you feel so uh, bullish on the Saints who lost in Dallas, needed fourth quarter rabbits to be pulled out of the right. off struggling offensive hat? The O-line is banged up. I, I know why you'd be bullish on the Saints, but I, I want to hear it from your mouth. Yeah, so number one, how hard it is to win in the Superdome. And number two, just how well their defense is playing. You know, unlike the Rams or the Chiefs, the Saints can win in other ways. They can win on defense. They can win on special teams. And I still think at home, Sean Payton and Drew Brees are going to figure out a way, Rich, to get 20 points on the board. And the way their defense is playing right now, I don't know that people are going to get 20 points on the board on the Saints down there. Dial up uh, Cam Jordan's soundbite from yesterday, if you folks don't mind, in our Los Angeles Broadcasting Center. Because he, he, when he said it yesterday, we were on the air in the last half hour, and I just knew that this was fodder for shows like this one, and yeah. it was going to be chewed up all morning on the sports talk circuit. This is what he had to say when it was brought up to him with Ben Roethlisberger coming into his house in New Orleans this weekend with a Hall of Fame resume. They've got a quarterback who might be going to the Hall of Fame. He's going to attack 20 Is that true? Roethlisberger? Yeah. So really? what did this offense do well? In this era? You put him at like a top three of this era. I wouldn't put him at a top three, but I think top he's going to go to the Hall of Fame. Top five of this era. Top five of this era. Roethlisberger, top five of this era. You put him at top five of this era. A couple Super Bowls. Probably gonna Is that a yes or no? Yes. You put So you have, who, who would be your top five? Drew. Drew. Tom. Tom. A-Aaron. Aaron, who's got less Super Bowls than Roethlisberger, but let's keep going. His numbers are impressive. So you're saying he? You're saying numbers are impressive. Right. His numbers are always impressive. Okay. Aaron. Okay. So then we, you put him right there. Peyton doesn't have decent numbers. Peyton. Peyton who? Manny. He's not. Well, I, I, didn't even, I didn't even count him in the. This era. is this is the era. He he retired him, two years ago. Him in the era. That was most of Roethlisberger's career. You're saying he's better. He's, he's better. he's better. He's better than uh, Philip Rivers right now. Right now. Career-wise. Career-wise. You, because you give him the Super Bowl or not. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he didn't have a so, more okay, accomplished, so, so you're putting, have a more accomplished career than Philip Rivers. You're putting him at number five. Yeah, I put him at five. Okay. I mean, so, okay. I, I'd honestly put Eli before I put Ben, but what? okay. What? Two Super Bowls. If we're going by his numbers. Except, except, except exactly. He, except Eli washed. Those are you. This, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Cool. Cool. So you're putting him at number five. What do you make of that soliloquy and back and forth there, Ross? Well, two things, Rich. Number one, I, I don't really agree. I mean, I think he's clearly top five, clearly a Hall of Famer uh, based on how he's played. But I'm just surprised that Cam would do that. I mean, why, why would you do that? I, 
when you're playing against a team, and by the way, the Steelers O-line, they love Roethlisberger. They're going to play hard for him. I just don't know why you would put more of a bullseye. Like, if it was a quarterback that I liked, Rich, and you're always going to play hard, you always want to win, you always want to be physical. He is a guy who sent a broom and a bottle of Jordan, yeah. Jordan Cabernet to Cam Newton after I don't know. sweeping Carolina I mean, last look, year. He's, he's entertaining. I get it. But I, I personally would not put more of a bullseye on myself when I'm about to go play against a team that week. Why give them any extra edge? Why fire them up even a little bit more? And why have guys like me come in to cut you on bootlegs, come in to hit you as hard as I can, trying to get you to shut up? Well, I mean, we did give credence to the, the, the conversation uh, yesterday. Brockman and I went back and forth, and Peyton Manning is absolutely, to Cam uh, Jordan's credit, in this era, I mean, he, yeah, Peyton, since, since 2004, since the drafting of Ben Roethlisberger, it's been, it, yeah, been, it was Brady, Breeze, and Peyton Manning. Those right. are the three that you can stipulate. Yes, Aaron Rodgers is in the mix just because he's one of the. Yeah, I think he's a goat. He's earned yeah. goat status despite having only one Super Bowl. And then it's it's take your pick from the the 2004 draft. Right? I think it's I mean, all, and, and it's amazing how good that draft was. We even I, threw Kurt Warner's name out there because Warner. Did have some time before 04. Yeah. His 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 period with the Giants is obviously no good compared to what he did before and then after with Arizona. You look at the numbers on the screen here between Big Ben Phillip and Eli. Their passing yards are pretty much the same. The touchdowns, Phillip has, uh, he's 20 clear of Ben and Eli. is right around the same. The numbers are clearly in Ben's win column, and that includes the playoffs where he's got 13 wins compared to eight for Eli and Phillips under 500 playoff wise. I mean, don't you think, Rich, most people would have Ben as the best out of that trio? I think Phillip and Eli is an interesting discussion based on how they're finishing their careers. I think most people would have Ben number one out of those three. I think so for various reasons. One is because Steeler fans are everywhere. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. Yes. And that's no disrespect to the fan base of the Giants right. or the Chargers. That's... For, for instance, he's played in the most Super Bowls. He's played in three. Yes. He also is a guy that is consistently getting his team to the playoffs as opposed to those two fellows, Correct. Eli and Phillip. So that's why. But when it all comes down to it, people kind of like bashing on Big Ben because he's always saying one sentence too many in his press conferences. There's always something. He's earned that right, though, Rich. He's earned that right. I, you're saying that <laughs> statement with a term, tongue firmly planted in cheek is exactly that, that, the point. You know, it's funny. It's ironic that Cam Jordan is saying those things where I just say, what's the upside to saying it? When I never understood the upside to Big Ben publicly calling out some of his teammates. So maybe maybe turn, turnabout's fair play for Big Ben. I don't know. You know, it was another name that we didn't really talk about yesterday, but he is, is in this era. Maybe doesn't have the postseason success. It's Tony Romo. Tony Romo has a two to one touchdown interception ratio in thirty games over five hundred career record. But you're uh, no, I mean his numbers are obviously um, some of the best in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. But you can't you can't throw him as a top five quarterback in the era. Would you kick one of the two thousand and four quarterbacks out of the mix or Romo over Aaron Rodgers? Really. You can't. I might, you know what I think's interesting? I, I might take Romo over Eli. I was just going to say that. I, that That's interesting because I think there are some people that would say if you knew what you knew now and you were drafting an expansion team in 2004, would you rather have Eli or Romo? I think a lot of people would pick Romo. Come on, oh, man. They would. And I love Tony Romo. I love everything about no, him. Eli's the had reason a better why, career. The reason why but is it terrific. Tony Romo's numbers are so much me. better than Eli's. The reason why Tony Romo is a terrific broadcaster is not because he's so effusive and not because he is the guy at the end of the bar. That's what puts him over the top between good and terrific. What puts him in the mix is a great broadcast, is his incredible knowledge of the game. Yep. And his X's and O's awareness is off the charts. Agreed. Okay. One, so I'd put him top five in terms of that. But you can, I mean, it's just as, it's so easy to kick Eli because of his lack of success outside of the Super Bowl seasons. Correct. Of consistent success. Yeah. His dork face, all of that stuff that everyone loves to make fun of Eli. But Eli Manning is an all-time great quarterback 
in the history of the NFL. And when you talk about, yes, yeah, dude. yes. Four games over 500. He's 116 and 112. He has got two rings and has been dynamite for a franchise that is the only one that can raise their hands and say, we put an L in the column of Brady and Belichick in the era of Brady and Belichick, the GOAT quarterback and, and Nick the Foles. GOAT coach. Period. And, and Nick Foles, Doug Peterson. that one game well, I mean, <laughs> size with a dominant the defense. Probably last year. My bad. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me. I just, I got, I got in a New York role right here. I got in a New York role. Please, Eli, Romo over Eli? You're just saying that because you think you would have beaten Tony Romo in those Super Bowls. Uh, I'm saying we uh, the, the Patriots lost those Super Bowls to Michael Strahan and O.C. Oh my no, God. Eli played Come well. On. You got to give him credit. Don Eli Manningham. played well. Two, two of the luckiest throws in NFL history. Why is that throw to Manningham lucky? Brady makes the throw that throw. to Manningham was unbelievable. Brady makes that throw you're talking about. That's the GOAT. That's it right there. When he goes in the Hall and of the Fame, that's one, throw, of the, that's one what, of the throws. What, what was unlucky on, about man. Eli broke those tackles to make that throw. You got to give him credit for breaking the tackles. Holding. <coughs> Look, Talk Eli had a better that. career than Romo. I'm just saying, I think if you ask some coaches and they were starting an expansion franchise, I do think some of them would, would rather have Romo. Although, I'll tell you where they really lose it, Chris. Romo's durability and the back issues. Sure. Eli. Eli has a, uh, Iron Man, man. Yeah. Iron Man. You know, Ben McAdoo was the only guy that could stop him from making a start. <laughs> By the way, and Ben McAdoo was right, though. Ben McAdoo was right to pull the plug on Eli, and the Giants are suffering because of it. Ross Tucker, good to see you here. Uh, before we didn't even get to you uh, pounding the table for Taylor Swift over Prince. <laughs> I mean, what else is there to say? It's pretty clear, isn't it? It's pretty obvious. Oh, my oh. word. Look, I, I understand everybody always talks about, I, I know Prince is a very talented musician. I get it, you okay? No, 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 no. You can't just you can't just say, give the caveat. Look, Taylor Swift is a very talented musician. Right. And she is a hugely popular figure for uh, for a ton hey, of what, art. Were you, what were you going to say before no, for that? A ton of ardent, for, for a ton of ardent uh, yeah. music fans. Yes. You know, and I understand that she's, she's, uh, she's an icon to... Yeah. Not your demographic. She's right. more of yes. a young girl right. demographic. But I am admit, I am and that's willing. That's absolutely fine for you to love Taylor Swift. I Correct. have no problem. You are, you are, have every right to love yes. Taylor Swift. But you cannot not, not. very fine musician away Prince. I mean, you can't There's just. No, no, even, he's unbelievable. Just do, I mean, I'm just saying, like, what are his? What, what, what's your Prince favorite Prince is song? A Mount Rushmore musician. But I'm not comparing years. them as musicians. No, what, are you not, I'm what are you comparing them to? I'm yeah. comparing their music. Oh. And I oh. much prefer Taylor Swift songs than Prince songs. If I got in a car and Purple Rain came on, I would turn the channel. If Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift came on, I would rock out because that song's <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. I would rock it out because that song's awesome. And I can give you, like, five Taylor Swift songs. I I think Prince's music is overrated. I can appreciate, you know, the culture and the genre and a bunch of big words that I, my tiny brain doesn't care about. I care about when I turn the radio on, how it goes through my ears and makes my brain feel, and Taylor Swift songs make my brain feel better than Prince songs. It's that simple. And a lot of people- His tiny get, brain went Rich, to Prince I got a lot so. of direct messages. I got a lot of text messages from people that say, dude, I would never admit this publicly, but I totally agree. Oh, yeah, but- the Swifties are nuts. Ross Tucker, <laughs> the Ross Tucker <laughs> podcast on Podcast One, it. where you can get, uh, where, where you can, uh, get this podcast- uh, my wife's is the Susie's? official Lakers podcast. Is did out Susie there ask Shaq? We got to find out she about that. She did, in fact, ask Shaq. I was listening to you guys yesterday. She did, in fact, ask Shaq what he thought about that. She said the response was more nuanced than anything else. <laughs> See? Shaq knows All what right, stay right there, Ross. We in. got one more segment with you. I'm not done with you yet, Ross Tucker. Ross Tucker here on the Rich Eisen Show. One more segment with Ross when we come back. Ask the poll question of Ross Tucker here, uh, Chris. Okay, Ross, here's what we got today. What's the most likely th scenario when we return on December 31st? We're off the, next At week. the end of the year. Okay. Oklahoma faces Notre Dame in the college football final. Okay, no. The, the Eagles are in the playoffs. Okay. The Chargers win the AFC West. The Texans get a first round by. The Lakers are the number one team in They're the Western Conference. three and a half Western out of Conference. the first place. Uh, okay. They have six standing. games between now and then. 
Manny Machado is a New York Yankee. I would say the most likely of those is Manny Machado is a Yankee. But, and by the way, you got you to know this. I'm from Philadelphia, okay? They really want Manny Machado. But the latest report I saw this morning is that if it's close, he wants to go to the Yankees. So I see all these Philly fans saying, don't make it close. Don't make it close. So we want to sign a guy that says he's not Johnny Hustle and would rather be a Yankee, and they just want to blow him out of the water with more money? I don't, that, that seems like the least Philadelphia thing ever. But I think he's probably going to end up being Yankee. I would say that's number one. Number two would be, I might even say Eagles make the playoffs. I think Eagles are going to beat the Texans and Redskins. Me too. Now the Vikings, I, I don't know if the Vikings are going to lose. Vikings are going to lose at Detroit or home to the Bears, for, who might need that game to get the two seed. Yeah. I see. I think the Bears, Bears are a better team than the Vikings. Yes, Let's I think, I think the other. Bears are going to. I think the Bears might lose to the Niners. Just keep put a pin Ooh. in that one. Put a pin in that one because I'm giving Stay you an unluckiest lock of the week later oh, on the show. Okay. Actually, the most actually the most the most uh, un Philadelphia thing of all time is somebody from the area, the suburbs, pounding the table for Taylor Swift over Prince. <laughs> She's from there. She's oh, that's no. a very Philadelphia thing. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> um, before I let you go, sir, uh, we've been asking this question of our guests the last couple of days. Your bowl game name is the last place you shopped. Okay. Plus the last thing you ate, and okay. then and then uh, add the ball game. We just asked that of Brent Musburger earlier this hour, and he gave the name of a local discount liquor shop and stopped right there. <laughs> and then I asked him for food, and I think he threw out his favorite food, which was an In and Out yeah, burger. Yeah, he wanted In and Out burger. I don't think he had that this morning yeah, for breakfast. Yeah, no. uh, that said, last place you shopped plus the last thing you ate. Yeah, I don't shop very often, but I do know what I, I took my daughters to get some Christmas gifts. So it would be the Target Avocado Omelet Bowl. Oh. Target good. Avocado Omelet Bowl. I like it, man. Pretty good one. The Target Avocado Omelet Bowl. Yeah, very. I was out in California feeling healthy. There you go. Throw some, throw some avocado. That's what Brady would do. <laughs> throw some avocado <laughs> in the omelet. It's very TB12 of you. <laughs> Ross. Yes. All right. Well, have a great call. Uh, who are you calling the game with on Westwood One? Uh, Brandon Gordon and Olivia Harlan. Okay. Olivia Decker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin's uh, daughter yes. is crushing it right now. Uh, and you tweet during radio broadcasts, man. I noticed that. I'm listening to I you and do I'm seeing it. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're multitasking. Yeah, well, definitely when I'm on the sideline because they don't come to me as much as I want oh. them to come to me. So, so definitely when I'm on the sideline. Not as much when I'm in the booth, but sometimes when I'm in the booth, yeah. At Ross Tucker NFL. Catch the Ross, Ross Tucker podcast on Podcast One. Check him out on the Radio Ravens and Chargers on Westwood One on Saturday. Thanks for coming in here, sir. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Rich. You bet. Anytime. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.